All right, so this is the Frisch Perspective with Tim Frisch. I'm Jason Whitaker, and today we are going to do something slightly different. I'm going to interview Tim and find out a little bit about him, who he is, why he has done the Frisch Perspective like he does, and maybe find out a little bit more about this nerdy Christian content. So, Tim. Uh, welcome to your show. Thank you for allowing me to interview you. <laughs> welcome to so my own is, channel. Thank you. <laughs> absolutely. So, Tim, let's just start out real quick. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Who are you? Well, I'm Tim Frisch, and I have a wife and six kids. Wow. And <laughs> I started this YouTube channel a couple years ago uh, because I believe God was leading me to step out in faith and, and do something evangelistic oriented. I have a last name that's a little unusual. It's Frisch. And so th that became the basis for my channel name. Uh, and actually, a German person pointed this out the other day on my channel. They actually put in the comments, your name in, in German means fresh, which is exactly right. That's exactly right. what the point of this is, is that I'm giving a Frisch perspective, but it's also a fresh perspective. So the German, the German people get it. They they totally get it. My name actually does mean fresh. I love it. And we kind of and we get it. We get it as well. I love the pun. So you know that kind of leads me into that. The Frisch perspective really caught my eye because the way that you handled an article that was pretty controversial was getting a lot of buzz. I heard it from the left. I heard it from the right. But then I ran across your page, it was so different. Why is it that you're presenting the material in such a really a non-biased way, but, but giving us a fresh perspective? What, what made you decide to do it, do it like that? Yeah, well, I, I guess partly it's just my personality. I'm the kind of person who likes to look at things from different angles. Uh, but I also did want to have a channel that would really allow people to uh, have a forum where they could discuss and and really think about an issue from different sides. So that really has been my goal. Now, what I've noticed is that that actually frustrates some people when they watch my videos because they really, really want me to come out and just come down strong on a certain side. Uh, and I actually had someone comment today just as an example and said, do you ever have a strong view on anything? So I think some people are frustrated by it, but I, I intentionally, uh, I, I'm trying to think of it more as reporting things in a way and trying to start discussion. I certainly do have my own opinions about things. Uh, and of course, if you ask my wife, she could tell you that. <laughs> but, you know, I try to set that aside a little bit. Although in my videos, I do try to give a little bit of my my opinion on it too. I just try to make sure that I keep it open enough that there's still room for discussion. And, and I think we appreciate that. So <laughs> if you don't mind, if you don't mind, because I in my mind, Tim, I really think that you're probably like an accountant or like a forensic scientist by day and YouTube uh, blogger by night. All right, the big question, what if what about your background? has brought you to this place of wanting to do this because you seem so ideal for it. So is there something about your background that makes this? Well, I'm learning, I'm learning. I, I think I've always had certain gifts and abilities. I, I definitely have always been more of the teaching type person. My dad though was a pastor and okay. he actually planted a church years ago. And so I just was immersed all my life in ministry. And then I went to Bible college actually and I uh, got ministry training. And uh, then I actually started working at a church as a youth pastor and then as an associate pastor. And I worked for a while full time for a church on staff. Uh, so I have a lot of ministry background and experience. I, I've worked with the church on staff for about 18 years and a lot with young people, too. So that really just immersed me in the world of ministry, but also in working with young people, just seeing the kinds of issues that our culture is dealing with today and how people today are thinking about those issues. And my background was also very evangelistic. So like I said, I really felt God leading me to focus more on that. And so that's kind of what led me really to branch out from the typical 
pastoral ministry to move okay. toward online evangelistic ministry. Okay, so I'm glad you brought that up. Evangelism does not, in most people's mind, um, paint the picture of becoming a YouTube channel. <laughs> so how did you make the jump from, you know, street preaching or what I would envision evangelism to YouTube channel? Like, yeah, well, how you make um, that jump? yeah, everybody would go about it a little bit differently. I mean, I think that evangelism is just about bringing the gospel into the sphere of our culture. Uh, so yeah, street evangelism is definitely one way to do that. But a YouTube channel is part of the sphere of our culture as well. And actually some people blend the two like Ray Comfort and he does street evangelism on YouTube. <laughs> but I just feel like my gifting a lot has been to, like I said, teach. And I think people are looking for information and where are they going for information? Probably not mm -hmm. to the street. I mean, they might, but <laughs> but really a, a good place to get information from from a lot of people's experiences. I'm going to look it up online uh, and I'm going to go to YouTube and learn about something. Uh, and now, granted, that isn't always the best place to learn stuff, <laughs> but it is where people are going. So I feel like if we're, we're going to meet culture where they're at, this is the place to do it. It's, or it's a great place to do it. I love it. I love it. All right. So. Let's talk about the first perspective, your channel. Um, you just um, passed a, a milestone, 10,000 subscribers. Congratulations. I think it should be 10,000 10, more. However, how, how do you see this channel growing, especially um, since you're so big on encouraging dialogue? And when we talked before, we know that sometimes the comment sections are not somewhere that you really want to look, and they're not for the faint of heart. So how do you, how do you see this channel growing, especially since you want that kind of dialogue and you kind of alluded to it? You got people on this side, you got people on this side of the argument of the uh, discussion, and they kind of clash, and sometimes they don't listen to each other. So how do you how do you see that growing? Well, it is a challenge. I mean, I think in some ways it would it would be easier to grow a channel if it was much more partisan uh, or much more trying to take a certain particular side. Um, you know, obviously there are a lot of people that are drawn to that, but there's so much of that, so much of that out there already. Uh, so I really wanted to do something different. And I think that what happens is, you know, you're, there are going to be people that are drawn to it because maybe they are partisan and they do like some of the topics you're covering, but they're at least willing to listen uh, yeah. to another viewpoint. And then there's of course, a lot of people that they're tired of just one extreme or the other. And they really want somewhere where they can go where, hey, maybe there's a place where I can listen to some different uh, different aspects to a, to a particular topic. And so I think hopefully it will grow as people that are kind of like-minded with me, you know, kind of have that desire to just think through topics, uh, you know, that they'll come and, and listen and like it. But, you know, there's a variety of people. I have some very opinionated people that watch and that's fine too. I'm sure that the channel will grow uh, to some degree with opinionated people who who can stomach my lack of partisanship or whatever, you know? <laughs> I love it. And there's nothing wrong with that. I think as you mentioned before, <laughs> there's there's tons of it already out there. Yeah. So just having a different perspective or a different view on it only helps us look at things better. So I don't think that there's anything wrong with that. Um, I think that's something that if we ask your your viewership, I'm sure they probably do appreciate the fact that you're just giving the information, which is something that I'm kind of interested in. What is your, for lack of a better term, what's your prep like when you get a, an article? Are you doing, are you taking some time to pray over it? Are you parsing it out? How, what, what's your preparation like before you turn the mic on and start a, a video? <laughs> well, it depends on the video. You know, and more recently, I have looked at articles. And, you know, I've always been the kind of person that um, I don't have to necessarily prepare hours and hours to talk about something. Mm -hmm. um, I, I had a pastor I was talking with once who asked me how long I spend to prepare a sermon. And 
I think I was about to tell him a few hours and he told me he spends like 30 hours and made me feel really inferior. Right. But I think what it is, is that I don't think of it as I'm just preparing for this one thing. Uh, I'm always reading stuff. I'm always trying to learn. So in a way I'm always preparing. And then when I think there's the right time and opportunity to talk about something, I try to talk about that. Now with the articles and stuff, I mean, I read through them and, and try to get a feel for what it's saying. Sometimes I'll combine different articles or video clips too of topics that really tie in together or information that would kind of uh, give different angles on an issue. So, you know, I will, tr I, I'm just naturally the kind of person who looks at a lot of information and then organizes it and then analyzes it. I'm kind of naturally wired that way. So I just read different things, watch different things quite often. As far as choosing what to bring to the table, you know, I've many times brought things to the table that I'm interested in, but that doesn't mean people are interested in watching it. <laughs> so I have to really think a lot about what's going to be on people's minds. What are they probably curious about? What do they need to hear right now? And I try to focus on topics that I think will be helpful, um, but also things that I'm interested in too. I mean, you know, it, it is, it is a way, uh, fun for me and quite a passion for me because I do actually have a lot of interests in the things that I talk about. I understand. I understand. Do you see, um, as we get ready to wrap up, do you see the Fritch Perspective offering anything online, Bible studies, book reviews, or anything of that nature, um, or just staying with how are you doing it? Well, I definitely want to continue to do what I'm doing uh, for the foreseeable future. I will continue to to do videos like this. Um, I'm not sure exactly what shape it will take over time. One idea that I have is maybe to add uh, live streams and maybe even like kind of discussion type videos where, and I have done that to some degree, uh, but you know, you think of certain podcasters, mm -hmm. uh, Joe Rogan, he always, you know, has these really long discussions with people and um, even Babylon, on B recently started a podcast where they yep. where they talk with different people. So I like the idea of doing that sort of thing. I think that would be enriching to people and very interesting. Um, but you know, it has to be at the right time, and uh, mm -hmm. I'd have to build up more of a studio, I guess. You know, okay. but yeah, and I'm gonna I'm gonna continue to to teach and try to use my my teaching ability in a way that I think will be helpful to people. So I have done, like recently, I did a comparison of the New American Standard Bible 95 with the 2020, and I put mm -hmm. PowerPoint slides up there for people to watch. So okay. yeah, I mean, possibly Bible, you know, actually going through scripture some. I mean, it really just depends on what the interest level is of the audience and what's really going to benefit them. Okay. So well, I appreciate it. Um, so... I appreciate your time today, Tim. This has uh, been a very insightful opportunity to hear a little bit about you and your your ideas and how you got to coming to this YouTube channel, to this platform. So I appreciate it. I appreciate your, um, your time on today. And before we leave, what are you reading now? What kind of, what, what last thing before we leave, what are you reading? Well, um, just so I, I sound nice and spiritual, I do have oh, yeah. uh, this book here, Knowing Jesus, through the Old Testament. Okay. And it's something that I actually read before years ago, but I, I really was interested in picking it up again and going back through it because I remembered it being such a good book. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's been something I've read. I, I try to read things that are going to continue to keep me sharp theologically and keep thinking about scripture. Of course, I read the Bible a lot. Mm -hmm. So that's my primary reading. Uh, and then I also have a, a political book that I'm reading and uh, more of a psychologically oriented book that I'm reading. And okay. then believe it or not, I'm also just reading like Hardy Boys novels, you know, just just like something, just just fun Nothing and simple that. for my brain. Be a kid again, you know? Nothing wrong with that at all. Tim, I'm gonna let you get back to your Hardy Boys and enjoying your reading, you <laughs> enjoying your family. So thank you so much for your time today and allowing me to come on your show to interview you and learn a little bit more about the Fritz Perspective. Um, do you have anything to say to the audience before we leave? 
Well, thank you everybody who has joined my channel recently. If you're new to the channel, I would love for you to subscribe and uh, become part of this YouTube community here uh, for more Christian nerdy content. And I appreciate my audience. Jason's the uh, part of that audience. And uh, it just shows you that it really is a community that you can build. You get to know people. And I really appreciate people like you, Jason. Thank you so much for interviewing me and for allowing me to be a guest on my own channel. I really do hey, appreciate it. There you go. <laughs> well, hey, thanks so much, Thank Jim. You. you have a great night.